Sahara cases have been around for a while. You've seen them on my channel. If you haven't, check out the link in the description down below. You can check out all these budget orientated cases. They all got RGB. They make RGB cheaper than what it should be and they can be synced with your motherboard as well. Now I'm gonna be doing a full, well not a full loop drain, but a, a draining of the hard line that I've got in the Be Quiet RGB 700 case uh, by Be Quiet. And I'm gonna transfer all my components and everything from there into the Sahara C500 case. Now Sahara sent over two or three 140 mil fans as well as three 120 mil RGB fans as well and uh, they also sent over a controller and an air cooler too and um, I'm gonna obviously connect it up I've got like the CPU is an Intel 86 87 8600 8600k and uh, it's obviously by Intel uh, still coffee lake and stuff like that I got like 32 gigabytes of uh, crucial ballistic RAM in there as well. Uh, MSI motherboard, don't even know what one it is. It's in there, but it fits in M.2s, MBMEs, all that sort of stuff. It's RGB compatible with five volts and 12 volts. And we're gonna be using the five volt cable to connect to this motherboard as well to get it so it can run off those fans with the five volt cable. So it'd be no problem. And also they sent over the case, which is the case is a C500, which I think I already mentioned. And uh, we're gonna be transferring it over, then checking temperatures and make sure everything is above board and it should be a decent price we'll talk discuss about the price at the end anyway so without further ado let's get this stuff out because i've got to take all of the hard line stuff out drain that off and then get all the components make sure that it will work and then stick them in to see 500 sahara case let's roll <laughs> Right, so we've got the RTX 2080 Ti, but we, we might put it in there, we don't know. Uh, we've got an RX, not an RX, we've got a GTX 970 in there by AVJ Super Overclocked Edition. So we're just gonna start taking this all apart and um, get it ready to just obviously put into the other computer case. It's gonna be kind of weird because it's all like custom water cooled and basically taking it out. Now I'll just put some random fans in. For the change of this old system, these fans in here, um, I should really turn it on so you could hear it, but I haven't got a power cable here with me, so I won't be able to hear it, but they're making a vibration sound. It's only been in there for like six months to a year, and it's been making this vibration sound because of the ball bearings in the actual fans, and it's just sounding like a didgeridoo. So we're getting rid of all of this, getting rid of the water cooling unit. Water cooling unit is Touch Aqua, which is by Bits Power. Um, these are by Casa fans, look. So you can see, clearly it doesn't even spin. Load of dust coming out of it. But the graphics card's good, memory's good, CPU's good, motherboard's good, NVMe, if I've got one in there, is good. Pump's good. Coolant is kind of sexy looking, I think, but it needs filling up and it doesn't really look that great to be honest with us. So just gotta take it all out. So, and then obviously I've got these little pots to drain it all. Then I've got the power supply, that's all good. Don't think I'm gonna use these RGB strips, but I'm just gonna take them out. Might do, don't know. Let's go, let's roll.
Now you can see the Sahara case is all built up. It's got a 2080 RTX 2080 Ti in there. Um, it's got 32 gigabytes of ballistic, crucial memory. It's got, I don't even know what power supply. Oh, the power supply is 750 watt power supply, but be quiet, one of the old school ones. It's got the new school ones, but I thought I'd just put everything in what I had and just put it together. You got a Sahara um, air cooler on top and it's going mad. At the moment, you see the lights, they're all connected by the motherboard sink. You've got the motherboard sync remote control here, so I can just press it, and obviously it will just go to um, the LED controller, which is on the back, which is here. So I can control the fan and the LEDs and the mode. So it that's the fan speed ramped up. Press it again. Fan speed's ramped down a little bit. Then modes, different colors that I can mess around with and then obviously led speed so i can have it fast or slow so at the moment it's really slow and it's speeding up and plus i've got the remote control here to control that now about this case so this case does not come with any fans whatsoever so those 140 fans that are in this case are called a typhoon 114 and they're 14 centimeters argb so addressable rgb and it sinks to the motherboard, no problem. I did get also the duo rings uh, by Pirate, well, Sahara Pirate duo rings fans, and these uh, sync for 55 colors and stuff like that. I think I've done a similar video to something like this earlier um, in the year last year, um, or towards the end of the year, or sometime, sometime, I can't remember. Leave the links in the description down below so you can check them out and uh, had some sort of fans like this, but I'd, these are the newer versions, so I'll leave the link in the description down below. But we opted to go with the Typhoon 14. So these are what that's in the back here. Now, I had a little bit of a problem. Um, when I went to put the motherboard in, on this MSI motherboard, I had to take the 140mm fan out and then squeeze it in. It was about probably three, cent, three millimeters out, um, but then I can squish it down and get it in there. So it does fit a 140 centimeter fan in there, but it's not 140, that's a bit big, 14 centimeter fan, but um, probably would have opted for a 120, but I just wanted to see how it works, if there's any vibrations or anything killing it off. Uh, I like the cutouts, they're like really quite easy, 24 pin there, USB 3 there. Um, the other cables would be hidden underneath. Obviously, you've got two eight pins for the graphics card there. The CPU's connected with a cable, so it's kind of gone through and then looped on the back. Haven't really done the cable management, but I'll show you the back in a minute. Uh, eight pin EPS connector at the top there. Um, that was, uh, had to put the motherboard in first. Um, and then, no, put the EPS connector in first because I didn't think I had enough room to get my fingers in and then now it looks like I would have enough room for the EPS connector and then I've got a CPU for the one for the 14 centimeter fan right there and that goes through the back there no problem and as you can see it's a 2080 Ti and um, it's pretty big right across um, but where the fans have got the nice little intake of cool air it can blow straight over the graphics card straight over to the back plate and straight out it looks quite decent for an air cooler Got loads of room for cable management down the bottom there. Had to take the bracket out. And this bracket is what fits in, obviously, um, a 3.5 inch mechanical hard drive. So yeah, that was a bit of a mission. You can also fit an SSD in there. Took that out. I still got to put my wireless card in the bottom, which I haven't done yet. Um, overall, not a bad case to build in. It's a uh, very simplistic, got a nice little cutout hole. Don't know what this cutout hole is really about. Is I, I can't. The only power supply that I've got that's got readings is the Asus one. Um, I think it's a four power supply and it's got readings in there. That would be quite cool to look at. But that that like power supply is like loads of money. It's like nearly 300 pound. In this case, I need to look it up. I can't remember how much this case is, but yeah, we'll have a look at that and find out the price. Anyway, you can fit two 120mm fans there, no 140s. Um, you can fit three 120mm fans on the front of the case. Um, and you can fit two 140s on the front and then on the top you can fit two 140s and you can fit two one was it three 120s on the no two 120s at the top as well for cooling you can have a little bit of custom cooling water cooling going on because they've got loads of little cutouts there as well so at the top there nice little cut out there cut out there cut out there as well for the cables for the io for the top 
of this case. It's got nice little holes. It's got ventilation everywhere. It's got three uh, cart holes at the bottom there for the USB, um, for your SSD and stuff, and for the cables to connect to the front. Um, and also HD audio is there. M.2 is at the top. Could probably get it out pretty easy. The CPU air cooler doesn't override it. Um, I'm going to connect it to a monitor and see how well it is. The glass is really funny. It's got like two screws on the back here. Um, it kind of feeds into the front and then you undo the top and it comes off like a normal traditional glass. That's on the front and on the side panel. The side panel hasn't got loads of clearance. Most of all of this is um, kind of all motherboard and case and stuff. You got cable clearance all underneath which gives you about two finger widths which is decent i'm just going to turn off this computer quickly so i can show you what i'm talking about at the back so if i turn this computer around you can see that i need to still put some cables in the back there now i've got an ssd so 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive could go here or an ssd which i've got here We've got a decent cutout as well uh, to put a retention bracket on, no problem. Uh, it's got a decent enough width there. Um, it's got about half a centimetre all the way around the motherboard area. But all around here, you get a very good generous serving of uh, cable management there. And also there, when you take out the actual uh, bigger mechanical hard drive. Now, if you want to get a mechanical hard drive in there, then I suggest that you probably take out um, the drive first and then try and put it in there or get a smaller ATX um, power supply to go in there. This is a more of an old school one, but it's not too big, but they make them a little bit smaller now, but I would just opt for a very smaller um, ATX or even an SFX power supply. And then you've got a lot more cable management there as well. Uh, cable management's really nice. They're trying to, it looks like kind of like a fractal design sort of uh, fit or Fantex one where they wrap all the cables down, where they've got a nice protruding inside the case, but out protruding inside the side panel. So I can have all the cables just lined up here, but then you're gonna have all these cables lined across the front, and you can see that I haven't got that much space really. So it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare for cable management. But yeah, let me put it together. I'm just gonna tuck all these cables away, and yeah, that's, what, that's how we'll leave it here. In there. Um, so that's the temperature we're kind of getting now. This is not overclocked. This CPU, if I can, oh there it is, i5-8600K CPU. So technically it's not a great amount of performance from the air cooler. You can hear it's roughly quite loud. It's, it's, it's audible, put it this way. If you had it on your desk, it's definitely like a little boring air sound. Uh, but I don't know what to say about it, to be honest with you. Um, the build, in this wasn't too bad um, for an average build. I just need to discuss the price. I need to find out what the price is. Right, I just found out some information about the case. Now, the C500B with um, has no added RGB components or the sync remote controller. C500B TS 4 times 12 centimeter ARGB Pirate Turbo plus the sync RGB and standalone RGB. C500 PS times two 20 centimeters ARGB tornado fans, which we didn't get to review, plus sync RGB and standalone RGB. C500 SS three times 14 Typhoon ARGB fans, sync remote controller, standalone RGB. So basically that's what you're seeing right now. So three the 14 centimeter Typhoon ARGB with a sync remote controller. And then you've got the C500 DBDS four times 12 centimeters ARGB duo rings plus sync RGB and standalone RGB. Now for that case alone as it stands with just the fans alone, so three 14 Typhoon, uh, 14 centimeters Typhoon fans, it stands in at 80 pound. Um, so it's available in Amazon UK, Amazon US is not available, Amazon Canada is not available. Amazon Germany and other places are not France. I think Spain and Italy the base models are available So it's really hard to find out where to get this so I'll leave the link in the description down below so you can go and purchase this if you're interested in this case Now back to the computer now at the moment It's been on for like 10 minutes now CPU temperature is 45 degrees 
Um, I've got it synced to the actual motherboard RGB uh, stuff, which you've already seen it before. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can check out the fans, how they work as well. Other than that, everything's working perfectly. It's just a little bit loud, a little bit audio. Audio, audio a little bit audible, that's about it. So, I forgot to mention, on top of the case you get a power supply button with two LED indicators. One's for a mechanical hard drive and one is just to show it's active. Uh, got a reset button, an LED button as well that you can recycle through the RGB modes and stuff which has got a plethora of modes. Then you've got a microphone jack, headphone jack, both 3.5mm jacks, two USB 2s and one USB 3 all at the top. Now the glass has got like a centimetre and a half of clearance on each side panel so you can get a clean intake of cool air. Um, technically, as you can see by the temperatures, it's not. To be honest with you, I don't even know. I'm going to have to go back and check to see if that CPU air cooler is actually situated on that CPU. I know 8600, um, 8600Ks run a little bit hot, but it's not even overclocked, so it should be a little bit more cooler than that, especially in the idle screen. I haven't even put a load on there or anything like that. I'm just showing you, like purely about just grabbing all the computer components for Sahara um, showing you like they've got a CPU air cooler uh, the fans um, and connecting them all up with the case as well case was a little bit difficult if you're not a pro at making building computers because if you're an amateur you're gonna probably have to retake the motherboard out and do things again and stuff like so it's just a bit of a mission but other than that once it's put together it looks nice but I don't know why it opted for a side panel to show the cable cables off as well it's uh, more of a chore of like doing all cable management especially taking out the 3.5 inch mechanical hard drive tray um, out there as well plus you need to make sure you're a bit wary that you're getting the power supply that's small enough because if it's not small enough you have to take that out and then probably try and put this back in but then you're wedging it all in and it's just another headache you don't need CPU cooler the lights and all that with the RGB it's all right they're both this sort of same density of color luminance and stuff like that they're meant to have more um, RGB to it well RGB yeah more RGB and it's addressable obviously because you connect it to your motherboard and it can do single LED or functions like lightning and whatever you want to do with it um, obviously RTX 2080 Ti takes up a lot of space in there gives you about probably about three finger width room of like um, where the case is as well uh, but if you look at how I've done it, I've got no fans at the top, but I've got a big CPU cooler there, a big 140 on the back there, and two clean intake for cool air through the front. And then obviously it comes with a magnetic filter and a filter at the bottom as well, and a bit of breathable holes in it. I just feel like it's a, the case is a little bit rushed because some of the aesthetics of it, I think it looks really quite nice. It's quite a generous bit of glass on there and stuff, but I don't like how you put the glass panels on. You've got like a to slide it in and then you push it against the glass and it could just shatter over your face and then obviously screw it with thumb screws they're not captive thumb screws either which is understandable because you've got to put the slots in so say this is like the bracket so you've got the glass and then the not the glass well yeah the glass will be on this side and then this is attached to the glass and then you've got another bit of the metal panel of the case and you put it in and then you thread the hole through the back and then you tie it up with the glass being secured to it. But you have to slide the glass in first, then push the panel, and then make sure that the panel uh, edges are slid into the back, and then screwed in with the thumb screws. You have to do that for both. That is a chore, and the other side's a chore. I like the fact they don't have the cables on the front of the IO. You can just pull the glass off, and it's quite easy to clean, and quite easy to put back on as well. Don't like the fact that I have got two 140 fans, and where I'm wanting to have clear, cable management it's showing all the cables down in that little compartment now if I had three 120s on there you wouldn't be showing off so much it will be behind it because the fans will be spinning and then obviously luminance will be happening you can turn the RGBs off if you don't want the RGBs but this is what the case is there for it comes without of the fans so you can put your own fans in there but at the moment as it stands three of those fans and the case is 80 pounds so i don't know how much everything else is because uh, we don't know all the prices but when i know all the prices i'll leave a link in the description down below anyway it's been a long old day this video should only took an hour it's taken me about eight hours to make this video and uh yeah hope it's good enough to let you know and obviously we're going to purchase a case around that area 
Anyway, it's been your man Roger Dean. I'll see you next one. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you soon. I'm so dizzy. See you later.